it is done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. I call to order the November meeting of the San Francisco Elections Commission. Today is Wednesday, November 15th, 2017, and the time is now 6.02 p.m. I am President Jordanik. Secretary Chan, can you take the roll? President Jordanik. Here. Vice President Paris. Not present. Commissioner Donaldson. Not present. Commissioner Jung. Here. Commissioner Mogi. Here. Commissioner Roll. Here. Commissioner Safant. Here. You have a quorum. And Commissioner Paris and Commissioner Donaldson notified me that there's traffic, so they're running late, but they should be here, you know, within the next, uh, I'm guessing, 20 minutes or so. And we also have with us today Deputy City Attorney Joshua White and Director John Arntz. Uh, next item. Item two, general public comment. Public comment on any issue within the Election Commission's general jurisdiction that is not covered by another item on this agenda. Hello, Commissioners. Brent Turner, California Association of Voting Officials. I uh, just wanted to make mention a couple things. Uh, one is uh, I saw in the minutes uh, previous that uh, there was some discussion regarding the Texas project that uh, uh, is failed to move forward and I just wanted to let you know and upon speaking to some of the people involved there on the ground that um, it is the conclusion that uh, Unfortunately, the uh, partnership of Microsoft and Verified Voting did not bode well for that particular project as we predicted. It would not. Um, the money was spent. Uh, they're not moving forward with it. And uh, this was an issue with the, with the RFI and the RFP stage. Unfortunately, the way that they, they were both concocted, um, it did not allow for proper response. And so there was none that they deemed appropriate. Um, which just uh, raises the caveat of RFP and RFI um, in general. Uh, also, uh, we noted in the minutes that there was some conversation last meeting regarding uh, moving forward more promptly with the San Francisco project. And uh, in the opinion of Cavo, that would be ideal since there's much concern about the 2018 election. Um, we haven't really thought we could get to 2018 and secure the systems for the United States. We were thinking more 2020, but there's a large public outcry right now that the 2018 election will be similarly uh, vulnerable as the 2016 was, and now with the, all the the um, uh, national security agencies uh, talking about that vulnerability, uh, there seems to be a public awareness occurring. Um, finally, uh, I had conversations um, with the open source pioneers, uh, with uh, Slalom, the group that's coming in and uh, making for a plan uh, moving forward for the county, and it was good to hear from them. I think they are aware of the issues with folks like Microsoft or Verified Voting and those who bob in their wake coming forward to manipulate the San Francisco project. The main thing we can do here and the commission can do is just make sure that we're protecting against that likely approach by these uh, companies that come out of proprietary um, work like OSET and others and just make sure that we are truly setting the standard for the United States and uh, particularly San Francisco and California. If we have a new Secretary of State um, we'll be able to move faster but we do expect even if we are relegated to having current Secretary Padilla with all the public pressure now occurring that he'll be looking towards San Francisco and we can get this accomplished. So thanks very much for your efforts. Okay, thank you, Mr. Turner. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, next item. Item three, open source voting. Discussion and possible action regarding the city and county of San Francisco's open source voting system project. Okay, um, let's see, I will start off, uh, I'll just mention a couple things. I, I met with uh, two individuals since the last meeting. I met with, um, a gentleman's name is uh, Robert Henning. He's the assistant director of OCA. And I was meeting with him um, 
to learn more about kind of government procurement within San Francisco and how um, how the, the project might be able to leverage agile procurement methods. And this is um, mostly research for um, the tech. And I also had a chance to meet with Supervisor Sheehy for the first time. And he's uh, also my supervisor. He succeeded uh, now State Senator um, Weiner. And I had a really good meeting with him. He uh, said he was briefed by Supervisor Weiner's, well then Supervisor Weiner's uh, staff on the project. And he, he wants to be supportive, which is very encouraging. So I'm going to continue to, to talk with him. Um, and then also, I, I know uh, Commissioner Donaldson's not here right now, but he did um, forward a memo that's part of the agenda packet that was distributed. And uh, there's a blurb in there about the open source voting system, because I guess they discussed that at their last meeting. Um, OK. Anyone else? OK, so let's. Uh, Move on to the um, sub item regarding tech. Is there a tech member here that is reporting? Okay. This is uh, Member Katow. Thank you for coming. Yep. Hello. Uh, member Refundo was going to report today, but he couldn't make it, and he also wasn't at the previous meeting, so it wasn't the most practical for him to do it anyway. Um, let's see. We. Um, my I apologize. My handwriting is terrible, so I'll stutter every now and then trying to trying to read the notes that I hastily wrote. Uh, we discussed um, in the last TAC meeting about a month ago, we discussed um, the issue of uh, TAC committee members um, doing public speaking about this effort. Uh, and we decided that we would uh, treat that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I have submitted an application to a conference in Boston in March to speak about open source voting in general, and I've notified the committee of that. And um, Member Wasserman may, um, in the summer, speak at a conference that will hear from them when uh, when we get there. Um, the good thing about this is these conferences tend to have multi-month lead, time, lead times, so there's plenty of time for us to consider such things and uh, vet what people are about to say. Um, let's see, we reviewed the contract and the RFP response from Slalom. Uh, the response to that was generally positive. Uh, I personally would like to thank Director Arnst for agreeing to make ballot images available to um, for these efforts. Uh, that was something that was raised, and I think uh, President Jodanik mentioned that that was uh, something that was agreed, so that's wonderful. Uh, and tomorrow we will have our next meeting where Member Refunda has invited um, someone from 18F's uh, state and local practice to uh, speak to us about modular procurement practices, um, 18F's um, experiences in this area and how they could help us. Uh, and for context, 18F is a, others can perhaps best, better explain this than me, but it is a sort of software consultancy set up inside the federal government that um, has a lot of experience doing software development things in a modern way inside of big government organizations. So their, their experience will be very helpful. Uh, that's it for me, unless anyone's got any questions. Oh, thank you very much. Are there any questions for Member Cattell? And I think there are, there's a sub-organization within the General Services Agency. Is that right? Yes, that's GSA? right. Yeah, they're part of GSA. That's right. Well, thank you very much for coming. Yeah, and so that, that next meeting is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. in room 421. All right, let's move on to the sub-item sub -item C. Uh, I've been helping Slalom organize the meetings, uh, interviews regarding its business case. And also I, I attached the uh, template to the business case that Slalom provided uh, to my director's report. So it's also part of the package. So. OK, are there any questions for Director Arntz? I've got a, a few, Director Arntz. Um, for starters, thank you very much for attaching the template. It's uh, shaping up. It looks good. Um, for starters, I was curious, like, what sorts of, um, I'm glad to hear that the slalom presented before the VAC committee. And I'm, I'm curious, what, what, how was that received? What, what types of questions did they ask, if any, the, the, the viewers? Well, the, the VAC is the Voting Accessibility Advisory uh, Committee. So it's folks who uh, have disabilities, and, and their concern is primarily that any, any system that the city provides voters is 
accessible uh, to, to voters. And that was, and that was the, the primary concern that the, the VAC members had. Uh, Slalom wasn't there to answer any specific questions or to provide any sort of feedback to the questions. Uh, but uh, that was, that was primary, uh, primarily the, the questions they had. More of the questions came from the previous item in the, in the, in the VAC meeting which was a presentation by Democracy Live, which is the vendor that'll provide the remote accessible vote by mail ballot to voters with disabilities and overseas and, and um, military voters. And there was concern that uh, it's, a, it's a situation that the city's creating a separate but equal voting standard for people uh, with sight disabilities uh, because the they they aren't they don't they can't vote fully accessibly at the polling places at the polls as as can other people, and so we'll address that in the, in the subgroup going forward. And so by the time we got to the slalom and it was a presentation, not a discussion, uh, there wasn't really a lot of specific questions regarding the development of an open source system. So. Mm -hmm. Regarding the 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 democracy live, was that more of an issue with the state law that San Francisco is following, or is it something about or an implementation that's it was a uh, well raised a red flag for them. Say it. I don't understand. It. Say it again. Like, what's your question? Oh, well, you had said that there were questions about like a separate but unequal. Yeah, the people. Yeah, so so the the people. So many of the folks uh, with sight disabilities that they they think that because it's a they they see the accessible ballot as being a partition service, not something that's fully available to everybody. So they, they really, they misunderstood the concept. It's actually increasing their ability to, to vote in a private and confidential manner. And they focus more on the fact that not everyone was receiving the same service. So we have to come back to that question. So it wasn't the state law, it wasn't the, the program itself. It was, it was just a misunderstanding of, of what's being provided. And part of that was we didn't really have time to frame the issue. We had a lot, we had more than a two hour meeting. So I, we didn't really frame it probably well enough. And the, and the folks that had the most concern were calling into the meeting. They weren't in, they weren't present, so they didn't see the demonstration. Even though we had, well, they didn't see, they have. So it was on a WebEx, but and also the we have to. But now we know. I mean, now you you, you learn. Mm -hmm. So going into the next meeting, we'll provide more information that they can um, they can consume prior to the meeting and have a better understanding. Plus, I'll frame it differently going into the topic at the next meeting and also at the subroom, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also on the subject of accessibility, the tech, they in incorporated uh, Mr. Neeson's letters on this subject, so that's included in their material. Um, also, regarding Los Angeles County, you know, I also appreciate you including that, that packet. Was that something that's on the Secretary of State's website or did you have to request that? I requested it. Okay, and um, just kind of for the record, I, I had a chance to read through it. This was only, I think, put on the website today. But um, th what they did was they submitted a, a, a system that's made up of just the central ballot scanner hardware component and a single software component that goes along with that. So it, it just seems to be only for processing vote by mails, vote by mail ballots. Um, I was wondering. Um, if, uh, if there's nothing, no other information from the Secretary of State, do you think, would it be possible for you to like find out from Los Angeles County if there are any plans for it to be open source at all? Or, or do, you, do you know anything on that? I mean, I can ask again, right now, I mean, and we've, I mean we've had this conversation. It's, uh, it's not, they've never stated directly that it will be an open source. And, uh, and certainly they've never made any indication that would be a license similar to what uh, is the materials that we've put forward. So uh, I can ask, certainly, but okay. no, there's nothing that I've heard to this point in case it's, it's open source. Okay, thank you. And then one last question. Um, is the, uh, does the slums work seem to be on schedule with what they're outlined or? I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the, 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 they're, they're scoping it out. They've, they've got the template. You know, the template is, essentially represents the, uh, the initial monthly report, the, the assessment of their, of their efforts, and then, um, so I spoke to Solomon today. They expect to get the uh, next uh, monthly report uh, in prior to the next commission meeting, so hopefully I can attach that to the next uh, report that I submit to the commission. 
And th that'll give us probably a better sense, but I mean, the template right now, it, it's the markers that indicate what they're thinking is regarding the project. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it seems to be on point and it follows the RFP as well. So it's in the contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Any other comments, questions before we do public comment? Okay, public comment. Walking up here, I, my name's Jim Soper. Uh, I'm not sure if I can ask the director a question. If not, we'll save it for later. It's just I wanted to make sure I heard right. There was nothing that you're aware of that LA has been talking about open source. Uh, the second question would be, what about disclosed source? And if you can't answer, that's, that's okay. Uh, at least I wanted to get the questions out there. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Soper. Thank you, Commissioners. Again, Brent Turner with the California Association of Voting Officials. Um, starting, I guess, from the back, and uh, certainly for the last amount of years, we've been hearing nothing but open source from Los Angeles County. Dean Logan has stated publicly with repetition that the voting system there was going to be open source. So um, I know Director Arntz doesn't have anything to do with that and is not speaking for Los Angeles, but just to be clear, oh, Los Angeles has been promising open source and has gone through extensive studies and made extensive public commentary to the extent that they will be doing open source. Um, our point with them was to make sure it wasn't Mitch Kapoor's Nouveau License OPL that as the first project it has to be GPL. Once you move into a more statewide operation, the permissibility of the license can open up, but initially, as San Francisco should be GPL. So that was the conversation coming out of there. So I'm quite surprised to hear that. Um, regarding the disabilities component, um, let it be recognized again that Dr. Gilbert's New Hampshire uh, one for all model is already getting rave reviews in New Hampshire. So this is already accomplished and done. So we're kind of speaking as if that hasn't already happened, but, but it has. So that's already in New Hampshire getting rave reviews. Um, we should also be looking to Dr. Gilbert's open source ballot delivery system rather than the Democracy Live version, which to the best of my knowledge is proprietary. So again, we have those issues um, surrounding vendor lock-in and, and all the ills that proprietary code uh, brings us that we're, as a country, trying to avoid. Um, the um, uh, separate but equal issue would then be resolved with the one for all system that Dr. Gilbert has placed in, deployed in New Hampshire. So those are just uh, some of my comments. Um, Regarding slalom, they seem like very nice people. In like I said, in meeting with them, um, they say that they have some open source people in their employ. I think they have 4,500 employees or something like that. Um, they were speaking with Brian Fox, who is the number two person to Richard Stallman at the inception of open source, and Brian asked if they could say what the names of the open source people were that are with them, and they said that that was proprietary information that they couldn't disclose. However, um, the concern is, is that they may not have those people at the ready, and certainly we're, we're able to um, facilitate that need if, if called upon. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Turner. Okay, uh, seeing no further members of the public, is there any further discussion before we move on? Okay, seeing none, uh, next item. Item four, discussion of possible action regarding San Francisco's next voting system. Okay, so this is an item that I thought we, we could, uh, you know, should have an item for, you know, just for the reason that um, Director Arntz is working on wrapping up an RFP for it, and it was also discussed at the BOPEC meeting. And the memo that Commissioner Donaldson circulated, or that was circulated, has a, another section about this topic. 
And um, so Director Hearns, I was wondering if you could just give us kind of an update on, on where this process is at. Yeah, so I started uh, outlining the scope of work. So I've gone through all the materials that I, I think I need to after I dra uh, drafting my outline. Then I'll probably start actually writing the RFP uh, next week, and I'll probably get a good chunk done during the Thanksgiving break. Uh, I've already started talking to folks in the department regarding any kind of services uh, we, we would need in support of the system, you know, comparison to what we have now, and projecting out to what we might need going forward um, with the next system. So, you know, yeah, so I think, uh, I think in a few weeks I'll have, I'll have a, a good solid draft put together. We've already started the, the process of uh, looking at like, the, the whole thing that I listed in, in the later item on the agenda, but the open source, the personal service contract, and going through all the, proce all the processes with the contract monitoring division and all that. So we've already started all that so that when, when it is drafted, uh, we can get it in to the, to the, into the process and get things moving. So and get it, get it issued. Um, it won't be this month, but hopefully early December. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for the director? Okay, um, I've got just a couple. Uh, for starters, um, um, it's kind of more of an open-ended question, but are there, um, is kind of the, the possibility of, of the open source voting project going to be reflected at all in some way within the RFP, or, or do you view it as a completely independent process? that won't really make reference to it. I mean, I can make reference to it, sure. But I, I mean, are there, um, I mean, I, I guess, is it going to, um, like the content will be influenced by it all? Like, is there anything, if you know what I mean? Yeah, so like with the, with the information from TAC, we're, we're gonna be phasing out parts of the, the system, moving in open source, that's, I mean, an RFP can't f force a vendor to, 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 you know, exclude parts of its approved system based on something that doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really hard. And plus, a, there, I, there's no authority in the RFP to require someone to dissect its product, especially when it has to go through the approval process. So uh, then also there's the chance that no vendor would step forward to even volunteer to to have that occur. So mm -hmm. then then you're kind of in a, in a bad spot. Because at the end of the day, the RFP has to be what's, what secures a voting system after 2018. Uh, right now, the process is that a system has to be approved by the Secretary of State's office, and then anything that's incorporated or, or replaced or used in conjunction with that system would also have to be approved. Uh, even if it's a, a pilot project, which is something that doesn't, I don't think it's named so much in the TAC, but it's sort of, sort of referenced indirectly would need uh, approval by the Secretary of State's office, you know. So, um, so the RFP is basically to first, it's the first goal is to secure a system for San Francisco starting in 2019. Um, and then as far as the open source, and I don't, I don't like talking about an RFP before it's issued, but uh, I don't, it's like talking about a contract negotiation in a way. Uh, but certainly, you know, one component, another thing that's in the TAC, and I think you sent me an email today about it. Um, you know, there's like like the risk limiting limiting audit aspect could be open source. The the getting the the results from the system and then providing reports or analysis of the of the information in an open source manner, um, or even creating an application that would allow the ballot images to be retabulated outside the system and compared to the to the system. I mean, those are all things that I think can be included in the RFP, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't, in my mind. Uh, there's not a hazard to the certification of the system that the that the vendor has acquired from the Secretary of State's office. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And just one related question: Have you um, have you been having communications with the mayor's budget office about how um, it's a little bit awkward because the RFP will be going out probably well before the budget will be decided for next spring, like um, how that's kind of going to be managed or. Are you, are you at least getting their, their okay with this process? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone knows the contract's expiring, you know? Uh, and everyone wants to have a voting system in place for the next election after 2018. It's, that's a priority. Um, so, yeah, certainly the mayor's office has been informed. It's, it's, it's been information that we put forward to the board during our budget uh, 
preparations. Uh, it's an information the department's issuing, so. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, let's open it up to public comment. Well, thank you, commissioners. My name is David Carey. Um, on the topic of, of auditing in a, in a new RFP, I think it's great to put some of those things out there. Uh, but I'd suggest that for particularly some of the newer auditing procedures, that that's something that the department should at least allow for the possibility that those are sourced from separate vendors than the voting system vendor itself. Um, so for an, an example is Colorado, which is in the process of implementing some, some uh, risk limiting audit procedures and they're not depending on their voting system vendor to do that. They issued that as a separate request. It may be, certainly when we saw the RFI uh, that was done a couple years ago, we saw some responses from voting system vendors about what levels of auditing support that they provided. None of them provided some of the, the levels of support that we'd really expect with some of these new auditing, auditing procedures. That may change uh, if you, um, with this uh, next RFP. Certainly would like to hear what they have to offer, but it, I think it might be a mistake to, to kind of um, limit yourself to only having the, uh, the voting system vendor providing those sorts of capabilities. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Curie. Commissioners Brent Turner again with CAVO. Um, I'm very concerned about the language again that we're hearing tonight. We're, we're hearing Colorado, we're hearing Los Angeles, we're hearing 2019. It seems to me like we're, we're losing this now. We're losing this battle. San Francisco likely will not be having open source systems by 2020. We certainly won't have them by 2018, even though the mayor, the board of supervisors, this elections commission, LAFCO, COIT, everybody in the city says, get this done. We're, we're not gonna get it done. We're, we're not gonna have this system in place. I hear other words, disclosed software code, make no mistake, even though some purported election reform activists might talk about disclosed software, I've mentioned to you before, that is no replacement for open source software. When we talk about risk limiting audits, when the villages hear that you're reliant upon an audit for a clean election, that's when they burn the village down. An audit is good, you want a 100% audit when possible, or the most robust audit you can have, but again, it is no replacement for a proper counting system when we talk about open source election systems. When we talk about ballot imaging, this is right out of the, I don't wanna use the term black ops, but this is right out of the bad teams playbook, ballot imaging, audits, anything except for open source software, publicly owned, publicly created, publicly monitored systems. That's what the country wants. We don't want vulnerable systems that can be toyed with by Russia or anybody else or insiders. We want properly securable systems. The science is there. They're deployed in New Hampshire. We can be as smart as New Hampshire here in San Francisco. We don't need to rely upon Colorado or Los Angeles. San Francisco should lead. The county has said, let's lead the state and country. If we're not going to do that, let's just talk about it honestly. Let's not talk about risk limiting audits or disclosed software or ballot imaging because that's not what we're talking about. Those things can be okay, but they're no replacement for what the county has decided we're supposed to be moving forward to toward quickly, which is an open source election system. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Turner. 
Um, hello, Ron Katow again from the TAC. I'll add with my TAC hat on that the um, recommendations document from the TAC, in fact, recommends that any open source solution also support a variety of um, auditing support, uh, have support a variety of auditing methods. Um, open source software and auditing of elections go hand in hand, and neither one of them is by itself sufficient to um, engender public trust and, uh, and create an open election. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cattell. And Commissioner Paris just arrived at 6.32 p.m. Okay, um, seeing no further members of the public. Uh, Commissioner Paris, we're just discussing uh, um, the next voting system item right now. All right, so let's uh, move on. Did you have a Yeah, no, I, I have uh, a question for Director Arndt. So we had a um, member of the public, David Carey, comment on um, uh, issuing a separate RFP for uh, a different vendor to perform a risk-limiting audit for the voting system. Wanted to hear your thoughts. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Or you could even just make it a GitHub pro project. I mean, it doesn't matter where the the program comes from. I, I didn't intend to say that the that the a voting system vendor that provides the system under the contract would also create the auditing application. I didn't, so yeah, certainly. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on to the next item. Item five, approval of minutes of previous meeting. Discussion and possible action to approve minutes of the October 18th, 2017 election commission meeting. Okay, just want to thank uh, Secretary Chan again for doing an excellent job. Thank you. So do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, uh, public comment? Seeing none. Uh, Secretary Chan. President Giordani. Yes. Vice President Paris. Yes. Commissioner Donaldson is not here yet. Uh, Commissioner Jung. Yes. Commissioner Mogi. Yes. Commissioner Rowe. Yes. Commissioner Savant. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Next item. Mm. Item six, commissioner's reports. Commissioner reports on topics not covered by another item on this agenda. Meetings with public officials, oversight and observation activities, long range planning for commission activities, and areas of study. Proposed legislation which affects elections. Okay, I'll, I'll mention a couple things. Um, for starters, I received an email yesterday evening from the civil grand jury, and uh, it's, I, I didn't have a chance to read the email closely, but um, they want a response regarding a couple um, reports from previous years, and I think they're looking for information. Um, I think one seemed like it might have been 10 years ago, and then another one is from a couple years ago. So I'll, um, I'm just gonna be digging that up. And if necessary, we can talk about it at next month's meeting. And then um, also just want to remind commissioners that received an email from HR a few weeks ago saying that we have a harassment training that's due by the end of the year. And everyone should have um, email on that. So that's all I have to report. Last week I participated in San Mateo County's uh, UDEL election. It's a local election and the last one to be held um, before the new law aligns uh, all municipal elections to be with even numbers. I worked as a field tech. Okay, anyone else? Okay, let's do public comment. Okay, seeing uh, none, let's move on to the next item. Item seven, director's report. Director's report on topics not covered by another item on this agenda. <laughs> I don't have anything to add. I'll, there's a typo, though, on uh, item 1C. The LA application was submitted on the 19th of September, not on the 29th. OK, thank you. All right, are there any uh, questions? Yes. Um, I have a couple questions. So, well, Dr. Um, Dr. Arns, thanks so much for putting this together. Um, I'm noticing that, you know, we have some new laws and programs that we're going to have to implement, whether in November or June of 2018. 
and I've, you know, I see in section two, A and B, you know, there's just other things that are happening. I'm curious about C, when you said that Prop N will continue to require much planning prior to implementation. Just curious to see if there's just, um, when, you, when, I, when I read like much planning, just seeing if there's anything that you've been hearing from Supervisor Fear's office or um, in, in the discussion there. Um, that's just my first question. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thanks. So I've been working on a lot of the prep and um, implementation on the legal side. And uh, the short answer is yes, there have been significant discussions with Supervisor Fewer, and we're hoping that a decision about um, what, if any, ordinance might need to be passed in order to implement it in a, in a responsible way. We're hoping that decision will occur very shortly. And I could talk to you offline about more details okay. about, what, about what that discussion has, may have looked like. Great. Um, and then in section three, um, it seems like there's been organized and hosted the first meeting for Language Ac Accessibility Advisory Committee. Um, and I noticed that in the other committee, there's like four topics that want to be taking consideration. Do they have, does the LAC committee actually have like um, kind of priorities of what they're looking for? Or I know it's the first meeting, so, but just because election's coming up, I just wanted to kind of hear, or if you have it in the, in the next uh, meeting to kind of list the kind of the concerns or just things that did come up because it said that they shared feedback and suggestions, so. Yeah, you kind of answered your question. Because so we had the second VAC meeting, so we had a uh, reoccurrence of issues. And also, I, I tried to set some premises that we could use to break into smaller groups to discuss uh, the smaller items, and the smaller, but the identified items of concern. One, to give it more, more structure, more, more cohesion. Then two, also, so we could have actually get something achieved for the June election you know, on the concerns, because this will be ongoing. This is not going to be just a, something we do for a couple of times before June and then do one. So that, that's, that's the idea is with the, with the, the issues. Is not, we're not saying that VAC has more issues than the LAC. It's just that the, the VAC has had two meetings versus one for the LAC. There was a reoccurrence of, of, of themes or issues that came up in, this, in the second VAC. So we broke them down. Uh, we, we've made premises. I'll do. I'll do some outlines of that. Send it back to the members and try to get some action on those. Lack. Yeah, this is similar. It'll be outreach for sure uh, mm -hmm. on the elections information, and then prop in. Um, and, and prop in will already. I've got a meeting set for next week with with an organization um, that was part of lack, but it won't be a lack meeting so much. Uh, so th that's already happening, and then we'll have the next LAC meeting in January, and you probably see a similar breakdown. But I think Prop N will we'll probably have a meeting prior, to, a group meeting prior to Jan to the full LAC meeting in January. So. Okay, great. Um, and would I would you be able to share like what community groups or who's part of LAC? Yeah, so there's actually, on, on our website, there's, oh, okay. so there's there's a list of everyone, all, all the attendees. There's also notes from the meetings, too. Got it. So if you go online, then you can you can look at that. I can send you the link if you want. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Can I ask, is this the, the first LAC meeting of all time, or just recent years? Yeah, well, this is the first time we've carved out language access from other entities prior to having the lack we had a voter information network group and so the language access or language uh, getting materials out in, in, in a language other than english would were part of the voter information network meetings uh, so and then with sb 450 there's idea of having lack so we thought and then with having filipino being a fourth language in, in town uh, we just decided and also prop in you know prop uh, decided to just carve out LAC as a separate entity itself and have the uh, have a, a group focused on that. And also with, with the LAC, it, hel it helps us identify audiences more specifically regarding language access and, and also the methods that um, reach folks. 
uh, we do a good job. We put a lot of information out there, but um, when, once you start meeting with uh, folks in a, in a setting like this, you start to get a, a different sense of the audiences that are out there. Um, so yeah, so that that's the reason for the lot. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great idea. Is there are there other departments in the city d doing a similar approach, or you think you're the only one? I think we're the only one. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, from my understanding, I, I know it's something other. Uh, I know it's something that um, oh, I forgot the name of the group now. Uh, they just changed um, the language access group. I can't remember the, the department's name, but uh, they they are advocating other departments pick up uh, idea of, of a lack. We're the first, and the, one of the I think it was the deputy director. I can't remember the name. <laughs> I should know this. It's okay. Uh, she was at the meeting and she said that uh, this is we're the first department in the city that's actually doing this. So. Um, and then we're also one of the few counties in the state, elections uh, counties that are doing it. And the counties that are doing it are, 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 are providing or organizing LACs under SB 450, so as a requirement, they're not doing it so much as, a, as an effort to, well, I can't say, it. it's more under, under 450. Right. Uh, so, but from the members of the, of the LAC and the VAC too, uh, who attend VAC and LACs in other counties, they've indicated that San Francisco has the most robust and, and most proactive uh, committees that they've experienced. So, so yeah, we're doing well. That's great. Mm -hmm. and, and Director, our LAC is, is um, separate from the Secretary of State's LAC. Yeah, and that's one of the ideas too. Like with the, is it, so is that to feed to the state LAC uh, ideas and information, materials, so that whatever, whatever's happening here can go on a, on a, on a, on a larger basis. And like one immediate example, not so much with lack, but with the VAC is the, uh, the indicating to voters that accessible equipment is available at the polling places. So Fred Neeson, of course, is a member of the VAC. And he had a VAC, state VAC meeting today. So he'll, he'll inform that group of what we're, we're discussing at the San Francisco VAC. Then once we develop materials, that'll go to the state's the SOS VAC, and then that can get promulgated throughout, throughout the state. So. Okay, anyone else? And um, we didn't do public comment on this item, did we? I don't think so. Um, public comment? Okay, seeing none. Let's uh, move on to the next item. Item eight, agenda items for future meetings, discussion and possible action regarding items for future agendas. Okay, um, on this I, I did not have time to finish the, uh, the auditing resolution slash policy, unfortunately, but um, I'm gonna try to finish that for the next meeting. And uh, so what other items do we have in line? I know we've got the um, commission annual report. Uh, we, we need to do to, at some point. Do we need to respond to the, or have a discussion about what the civil grand jury is talking about in detail? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to read that email more closely so that we might need to have that on the mm -hmm. on the agenda too. Probably talk to Deputy City Attorney White about that if, if we need to. And then um and then also there's going to be follow-up items for the director evaluation for future years. That's something else that we had discussed. Okay. Um So let's uh anything else? So public comment. Good evening, Jim Soper. Uh, about auditing and so on, I have in front of me an article from November 6th of Network World that announced what I certainly didn't know about and I think a lot of compu pe computer people did not know about. There is on every Intel chip, level zero is the base level for software and then you go up to that operating system and so on. There is that level, Minus three, hidden away, a complete operating system called Minix, M-I-N-I-X. Includes a full networking stack, file system, drivers, including USB and networking, and a web server. I didn't know about this. I already knew that if you have just an operating system, you have something so terribly complicated that you can hit, not trust any computer 
open source or not, or if you're talking about election software, it's sitting in an operating system and so on. You cannot trust any computer to 100% uh, produce the right results. And then I read this, and Intel's got a secret operating system underneath all of that. You have to have auditing, along with open source. And now the, the phrase risk-limiting audit is being brought up uh, several times today, and I'm not sure if the commission really knows what it is, and I'm not going to attempt to explain it right now. But I would like to suggest that uh, you invite Dr. Philip Stark, who is the main proponent of risk limiting audits, to come over from the University of California and do a shortest presentation on that. And I could help arrange that if that's what you would like to have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Soper. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing none, let's move on to the next item. Item 9, Public Employee Performance Evaluation for Director of Del Elections, John Arntz. Well, if we could just uh, hold on that topic for a second, okay. yeah. uh, if you don't mind. So, but I, I actually don't know the ins and outs of risk limiting audit, and that's the first time I've heard the phrase here today. So unless that phrase is clear and meaningful to the rest of the commission, I wouldn't mind a little bit of explore, exploration so that we can uh, make an assessment, perhaps recommend a policy. Uh, to the director and the department as they assess whether to issue a separate RFP that incorporates a risk limiting audit, uh, you know, for a separate vendor other than the vendor that de develops our interim voting system. Okay, sounds good. We could do that. Okay, so uh, we can have risk limiting audits for a future item. All right. Uh, so let's move on to the next item. Uh, item 9, Public Employee Performance Evaluation for Director of Elections, John Arts. This would be in, oh, public comment on all matters pertaining to this agenda item. Would be A, and then B, we go into closed session. Okay, so before we move into the closed session, let's do the open session portion of this item. So does anyone, any commissioners have discussion before we open it up to public comment in open session? Okay, seeing none, uh, public comment on this item? Thank you, commissioners. My name is David Carey. There are many very good things that I'd like to say about John Arndt's leadership of the Department of Elections for the conduct of elections. In a number of ways, he leads not just San Francisco, but sets an example of better practices for election administrators across the country. Simply said, excellent work for the job he was hired to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Carey. Okay, anyone else? Okay, seeing none. So, um, Deputy City Attorney White, just remind me, we need to take a, do we need to vote to move into closed session in public or? Yeah, I mean, t t you do have to vote, even though it's legally required to go into closed session to do okay. a performance evaluation. So, okay, so um, in terms of the wording of the motion, it can just be to go into closed session or do we need to state the what's written here? You, uh, okay. Better to state what, what's written there, but. Okay, so clear. would someone like to make that motion? I'll move to go into closed session pursuant to the Brown Act, Section 54957B, and Sunshine Ordinance, Section 67.10B, to discuss the performance evaluation of a public employee. I second. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Secretary Chan. President Giordani? Yes. <clears throat> Vice President Paris? Yes. Commissioner Jung? Yes. Commissioner Mogi? Yes. Commissioner Rowe? Yes. Commissioner Savant? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Okay, we are back into open session. The time is now 7.40 p.m. So during the closed session, we agreed that no portion of the closed session will be made public. So, um, anything else? Okay, that concludes the meeting. The time is now 7.41 p.m. The meeting is adjourned.